the Orange of Netherlands produced a tremendous comeback last night against two-time World Cup champions Argentina in a stylish fashion through a sensational free kick that saw what Wego scoring a brace. But unfortunately, they couldn't, you know, progress as they were eliminated through penalty shootouts to see Argentina. next week as the winners of today of course England against holders France and getting cut and raised by Morocco African representatives playing against Portugal to see who will clash against each other in another semi-final good afternoon welcome back to the touchline my name is Max Olasik it's the fan zone we want to review what's happening as far as World Cup is concerned the tournament that is currently under in Qatar 22nd edition of the competition Ken is still with us Barry Silla is joining us good to see you Barry how are you doing very well thank you the teams you supported got eliminated, all of them. Which were these teams? Uh, sadly, this is Germany and Senegal. And that shows <laughs> you the World Cup is full African of champions are, and 2014 winners, Germany. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my goodness, people are still supporting Germany nowadays. <laughs> At least the team I have been supporting all along, though sometimes they can disappoint, but they are still in the uh, championship. They will be playing holders, France, it's the three lions. My colleague Daniel Wahome calls them three squirrels mm -hmm. because they disappoint a lot. Ken! What do you make of the semi-finals for yesterday? Quite uh, drama. Football is becoming insane. I, it was it was really immense, you know. The, the, the first game ends and you, you, you don't even have time to process and then Argentina comes against Netherlands and you, you still don't even... You, you lack sleep because of that because, you know, immediately after the Brazil game, people are still talking about it and they thought, oh, it's gonna be have it's gonna be a clean thing for Argentina, but the way Netherlands come back, you know, it was so unreal, you know. Uh, we was we were speaking with Barry before we went on here, and he spoke of how the Dutch usually play and how they switch to long balls. And Wout Vegas did his thing, so it was it was immense. But you know, everyone has to talk about how Brazil went out. You know, they had a lot of talk, you know, before the fans themselves were really really hyping Brazil. You know, we'd see this, we'd see that, but you know, Croatia. They just keep doing this thing because we've seen them doing it in 2018 and, you know, we can't even rule it out in the semi-final against Argentina because when it gets to penalties, we know who's winning. I have a good friend of mine in Silas Kinote, the Director General of Kenya, Urban Roads Authority, one of the most performing parastatal heads. He was telling me that his World Cup is ruined because the teams that he's been rallying behind have all gotten eliminated, but you see, He's not disclosing the specific teams he was supporting. So someone can easily tell either Brazil, yeah. <laughs> just like yourself, you said German and Senegal, yeah. the African champions. But generally, it's been huge drama. Yes, it's a huge drama. The tournament has lived up to its billing. Forget about sure. the side shows. And we mentioned that when yeah. we were starting the yeah, program. Yeah, forget about the side shows, politics, LGBT. Football matters, it has lived up 100%. One of the best World Cup tournaments. One of the best World Cup tournaments. And I, I, I suspect Qatar have been breathing easy because now focus is on the game, not really on politics. Side shows. Yeah. And, uh, um, and it also, adding to the drama is that we have something like a football revolution. The traditional uh, heavyweights are going out. So nobody respects anybody anymore. So I won't be surprised in this World Cup. If, if Minos, yeah, like yeah, Croatia yeah, and Morocco, yeah, pull yeah, us up some yeah, surprise. If, if a team that has never been there goes there and wins it, because now people have more courage, people are playing without fear, and that's what we want to see in football. I think for me last night, I was impressed with Croatia eliminating Brazil, because I've never supported them. But for Netherlands, bowing out, I really felt bad, because I wanted Louis van Gaal to clinch the tournament. This is, I think, the second time or third time he's mm. made a comeback to be in charge of Netherlands and quite unfortunately they were eliminated and considering what he's going through in terms of his health issues and what he has done for the game, is a man who means well, mm -hmm. but quite unfortunate, Ken. Yeah, it is quite unfortunate because, you know, he's one coach, each time he's at the Dutch national team, they've been able to perform. The last time they were at the World Cup, they finished that and they also bowed out to Argentina on penalties. So, you know, it, it has never been an easy team to play. You know, we saw they did Spain in 2018. We saw in the group stages how Gakpo was amazing. You know, they managed to grind some good wins. 
Uh, so it's just so sad for Van Hal, but you know he's had a great career as a manager. You know you don't get to manage Man United and Bayern Munich and, and Netherlands again at the World Cup if you are just uh, any manager. You know he's had a great career in managing, and I wish him all the best. And also for the Dutch team, if you look at the squad that played last night, you you take away Deli Blind, uh, you take away Van Dijk, mm. you still have a great team. You still mm. have a great young team. The Gakpos, you know, Nathan Ake looks like a real defender when he's with them. Denzel Dumfries. So I will write off the Dutch in any coming tournaments. You know, this 2024, there's the Euros in 2024, 2026. You know, hopefully there are more teams so they will qualify again. So it is sad. It was sad to see them go out. But, you know, credit to Argentina. You know, this is the game. It's a knockout game. You know, you have to win. Yeah. Be it penalties, be it a scrappy goal. You have to win. And that's what they did. My homie and good friend Levi Musumba saying, can't wait for tonight's blistering encounter, notably Kyle Walker versus Kylian Mbappe, Maguire versus Giroud. Mm -hmm. France versus England, if the lads comes through, it will be an epic duel. Do you agree? Yeah, I know it will be uh, a tight game. They've been bantering all over social media. I think it's There's more much mu hype around yeah, this more, game. There's Why? a lot of mind games, I think. Uh, but uh, there was also some scare earlier that Kylian wouldn't play, but I think it's just mind games as well. <laughs> Uh, but it will be interesting to see those two duels, especially I'm looking at uh, the Walker Mbappe, Dembele and Mark uh, Shaw. Shaw, Luke Shaw. So the wings will be fire. Uh, but don't forget in the middle, if Rabiot is given space to operate, those ping, those passes, then uh, the, the two centre halves have to tighten the, the back, that is uh, Maguire and uh, Stones. So it is going to be interesting. At the same side, this side, if they allow those kids can afford them and uh, Saka to run at them, then maybe they might be in trouble. But overall, I see France as an age, uh, but the game is 90 minutes. We might end up 120 again and then penalties. We never know. One of my directors was telling me to say something about Saka. Saka is a huge, phenomenal player featuring for Arsenal and he has had a good outing at the World Cup in Qatar for England. I think so far he scored two goals mm. uh, and yes. he, he played against uh, which team the last game they played? USA. USA, United States of America, mm. when people expected uh, Marcus Rashford to start ahead of him and he played and mm. indeed scored. So he will be a huge addition to the score tonight against France. I don't know whether Gareth Southgate will opt to play for him, to start him, or Marcus Rashford will start ahead of him. If you are Southgate, what would you have done? Saka has to start because of the defensive work he puts in. Yes. You know, this this uh, French wingers are no joke when they get the ball running back at you. So, you know, your winger has to help or your forward player on the right side or left side. They have to Actually, help. Actually, so, Saka started as a defender. Mm, Most yes. people assumed that he yes. was a defender, right? Yeah, he started off as left back. He's played a left wing back. So, you know, it might be a better option to rush for who is more direct in running forward because his speed is more towards the goal. And also... Uh, I think uh, there will be a big battle in midfield because we have two really, you know, immense young midfielders with uh, Declan Rice holding it for England and Chaumeni holding it for France. So I think that's where the challenge will be. Defensively, you know, you look at England, their record at many uh, tournaments, you know. Maguire has been great and Stones, they have been great. And for uh, France, you know, it's a, new, it's a new partnership, a totally new one. Varan, Upamecano, they are both world-class players, you know, uh, great defenders, Champions League players, you know. So I think the, the whole duel depends on the wing play, both for England and for France, because that's where the speed is. The two full-backs, uh, Walker and Shaw, they are also fast, but you know, Mbappe, Mbappe has been immense this World Cup. So this, is, this, is, this has the ability to be one of the games of the tournament. Judy Bellingham, the Borussia Dortmund wonder kid, has been sensational, and I think... He was a huge ha asset for England in their victory mm -hmm. against the United States of America to qualify to quarterfinals, which they play tonight against the oldest France. Mm -hmm. Do you think he will continue with the same momentum? Yes, this is a kid who can play, I think, another three World Cups. At 19, he's doing really phenomenal work, especially what you see he's doing at uh, Borussia Dortmund. Uh, and he's a young, young player who, who understands his role very well alongside uh, uh, Anderson, the experienced Anderson, and then Declan Rice, they are forming a formidable triangle in that heart, in the middle of, 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 of England's play. And, and they don't just cut, they also take passes up, up front. So it's going to be interesting also, if they don't check that kid out, he, he can cause some damage as well. Jordan Henderson, initially, uh, during the 6-1 route 
of Iran at the group stage. He didn't start. Of course, Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips are the ones who started in the midfield. But he's defying all odds. In fact, he scored a goal recently. Yes, yes, yes. But, you know, will he be a great fit for this game, you know? Especially uh, the France one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, he did play well uh, against Senegal. He's when he got the goal. He did play very well. But will you start him against France, you know, because, you know, their midfield is really dynamic, you know. Rabiot is a person who runs box to box. Chaumeni is really powerful, you know. You know you'd, so who should play alongside uh, Declan Rice? Calvin Phillips? I think it be, it'd be better off with Rice, Phillips and uh, Bellingham as the eight, you know. I think that will serve them much better because the, these days Griezmann in the World Cup has been playing sort of deeper behind Giroud in the midfield. So you need someone on him because he's been really sensational in that role. Morocco up against Portugal. Mm -hmm. Fernando Santos, the tactician for Portugal, didn't start Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the world's best in mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. And you know, the guy who did play mm -hmm. in his place, Ramos, scoring a hat trick. Mm. So it tells you. Um, the days are Ronaldo yeah, are, yeah, are numbered. And also, coaches have like secret cards. You might expect uh, plan A, then he introduces plan B. So like this kid who scored uh, three goals, he, he could come in really handy because some people are used to maybe following videos of Ronaldo. I'm going to mark him like this, I'll mark him like that. Then boom, you see somebody different. So Morocco has to be ready, but I, 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 I can foresee Aram, but he's going to have a massive game uh, in the heart of that midfield against Bruno. So, and then we, we also want to see in that wing of Akimi and Ziyech, more attacks coming to put pressure on the left back. Uh, for Portugal, but also you, you have to notice that uh, Sofiane Buffal, uh, he needs to do better. I was disappointed in the last game, the, what game was that? Was it Spain? Spain. Yes. They missed like three chances very often. Yes, yes, they possess the game. Yeah, but in, big games, in, in big games, in big games. You execute the available scoring In big games, if you don't execute, you're out. So, uh, I, I so hope... So their forward line needs yes, not needs to be to complacent. Shop. Yeah, up, up, the back line is good, tight, they can tighten and the, the defensive midfield. But taking the ball up front, you need a finisher. Yeah. And that's they've been their greatest undoing. Bruno Fernandes and Bernardo Silva have been immense for Portugal. Yeah, I think their whole midfield, even William Carvalho, when mm -hmm. he stepped in, you know, mm -hmm. they've been really, really simple, direct, and, and, you know, they've become the most important players. You know, all the cameras will be in Ronaldo, but you look at the work that these guys put in because they also give it in defensively. They chase back and they chase front. And that has helped guys like Joe Felix to really show what they can do on the ball, to, mm -hmm. to run with it. Otavio, you know, in the wing, to even Otavio when he steps in the mid or replaces the wing, you know, mm -hmm. they can really get on the ball and do something with it, you know. So I think everything in this game, it rests with Portugal, as Baria said here. Mm -hmm. Morocco like lack that striker who, you know, a shooter, you know, a person mm. who will be in the box mm. and everything comes in mm. aerially. He, he, he just looks like he'll get a goal. I think they lack that. It was evident in the Spain game because of the chances they missed. Mm. And Nesri has not been in the best uh, form as their striker, yeah. you know, so it will be really tough. And they're also going against a really, really experienced defense, yeah. you know, Ruben Dias and Pepe. So. Mm. It won't be easy for Morocco, but we have seen the past two weeks what we've seen, you know, it's something crazy. No World Cup has ever seen Japan, Germany, mm -hmm. Spain, you know. So we can't rule out a, an upset, but, you know, tot, uh, Portugal walk into this game as complete favourites. Yeah, sorry uh, to add, uh, to add yes. a bit on to his, his, uh, his input is that maybe Morocco need to put fast players to pull those yeah. old defenders out. Uh, maybe bring Pepe to tackle you. You, you know, football is mental. It provokes him quick. Uh, ZH needs to cut inside a lot of times, and not only on this wing, he can also go to the other wing and put a lot of pace on the ball once you, you take it up front. The drag play that you want to hold onto the ball, I saw Neymar do it. You, you have the ball, then you, you want to do a lot of things, then they, they are on you. But if you release the ball quick to ZH, um, then maybe they can have a chance if they put a lot of pressure on that defense. A friend of mine was telling me yesterday that he's starting to doubt pandits because you remember when the tournament was starting and how pandits were tipping some sides to be favourites for the championship. It's not coming to pass just in case uh, yeah. Portugal get eliminated by Morocco and uh, England beat France. Yeah. We will have four teams at the semi-final stage in England, Morocco. Argentina and Russia. Croatia. Mm. And out of the four, mm. probably it's only Argentina who has won. Who had stood a chance mm. of clinching the World Cup because mm. 
people's prediction revolved around the likes of you know Brazil. Mm. Uh, Germany was it really prominently mentioned? Mm. Spain. Mm. Spain. The yes, Spain yes. as well. Mm. Yeah. So which means it's been it's been an insane tournament with Yeah, yeah. It, it has been insane and you look at the teams which, which are remaining, you know, people before the tournament were talking about the holders cast in mm. France. Mm. They might go out in the group stage but you know they <laughs> Oh, like it happened to yeah. Germany in mm. 2018 after and, they won in... And Spain in 2014 also. Yeah. So, you know, people thought it would happen to France, but they, they've just shown that not yet. You know, we've seen Giroud breaking records. We are looking at Mbappe at this World Cup, you know. People don't get to watch him much in the Ligue 1 Uber Eats. Mm. <laughs> so they're seeing him here and they're like, really... But that's the player he is, so... You know, France. He's been maverick. He's scoring been, five uh, goals and he stands a big chance of becoming the tournament top scorer. He, he, he will be, you know, if he makes it past this really, really, you know, mm -hmm. tight England defence mm -hmm. because the Maguire and Stones have had a great record for, under Southgate as a partnership, you know. He will, be, he will finish as the top scorer. Uh, but also you look at something else that this tournament has provided is, you know, uh, a, a chance to look at how football has progressed in, in many, many nations, you know. Uh, something a uh, team like Morocco, you look at the Asian teams, even the, some of the African teams in the group stage, you know, this is something this tournament has provided because we didn't really see it in 2018, but this tournament, we have seen that the quality of football has, not just the Africans and Asians, but also Europeans, South America, even the North Americans, it has really stepped up a bit and football is, is really, really of great quality. Senegal up against France, during the first half they were very impressive, but mm. the just became complacent during the second half and conceded three rampant goals oh, against England. Yes, uh, I think what uh, most what, what what can we say of Senegalese goalkeeper and Chelsea? I think, okay, I can I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> like to zero in on blaming one player, but I think also what happens is the, if you don't have the mental for 90 minutes to cope, because if you're playing the first 25 minutes, you're on the other side, you are even scoring, almost scoring two goals. Then suddenly you go to sleep. It shows the African teams also, apart from tactics and techniques, they need to work on players' mental ability. These are all players who play abroad with these other guys. Yes, they have so met, our, yeah, they have our, clashed together. Yes, our coaches here need to even hire mental coaches for, for situations like this. But unfortunately now, when you are one nil down, it's like you've given up, so I don't know. Maybe this is something we need to work on, especially with the upcoming players, because a lot of these teams that are in the World Cup as well have seen they've introduced other new young players. Senegal have seen a couple. Uh, Ghana, I saw a couple like uh, what's the name of the the guy at the guy at Ajax. Yeah, only 21. So if you put in another World Cup, he'll be 25. So if you work on his head, he'll be a superstar. We just need to work on that element. Yeah. Can. Mm -hmm. Yourself, what are you looking forward to tonight and uh, heading into the next week's semi-finals? Yeah, I think uh, if you look at the backstory between Portugal and Morocco, they had a really tight game in 2018. And also if you look on the map, their proximity, you know, Morocco might have something to prove against because Spain, Portugal, Morocco are really close countries. So I think that that itself, there is something cooking there. So you might see a really, really amazing game. There might be an upset, you know, it's football. Anything mm -hmm. might, happen, might happen. But I'm pretty sure the, the, the game everyone is waiting for is England versus France, yeah. you know, because... Mm -hmm you look at the talent that is there, the Premier League talent, especially mm -hmm. for England and mm -hmm. La Liga and Bundesliga for France, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be a really, really close game. France have the edge in terms of experience, World Cup experience. You look at their goalkeeper, mm -hmm. uh, Varane, Giroud, Griezmann, Mbappe, they've been there, even Dembele, they've mm -hmm. been there, they've done it. So Kimpembe is out injured. Yeah, yeah Kimpembe yeah. is out, sadly, you know. I so we'll play alongside Varane at it will be Upamecano. Upamecano, yeah. 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 They still yeah. have the option of Konate. Yeah. They're even playing Kunde as a fullback right now yeah. because they have a lot of yeah. fantastic centre-backs there. Options, you know, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's, France are also well-armed for this match, but, you know, England, they have a, a hitter striker. When Hurricane is on form, you know, everything that they send to him, short goal you know mm -hmm. so i think the, the game will be tipped by a, a super a sup, something from a superstar and we are not short of superstars in that mm -hmm. game i think sorry to add to what he's saying england might 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 uh, opt for uh, what do you call it they won't do much with that ball just release it to the wings target uh, hurricane yeah. hurricane knows the weakness of his keeper at tottenham mm -hmm. nice. yeah. and uh, <laughs> which lesson should african teams borrow from 
uh, Qatar World Cup, considering what happened to them, most of them stood a chance of progressing, yeah, like yeah. Ghana, yeah, yeah. Cameroon, Senegal, I, but I think, the complacency. Yeah, yeah, I think and there have been reports of, you know, uh, interference with player selection yes, from that. coaches and even from some of the legendary players like Samuel Etoff, yeah, Cameron, yeah. who is in charge of their federation right now as president. Yeah, uh, number one, complacency, as you said. Number two, independence, the team as a, as a structure from the head coach to the, to the players. And then number three, attitude. Your attitude has to be right in such a tournament. Number four, you have to have unity and teamwork. The problem when we bring players just the other day, they, you know, like for example in the English Premier League, they were released I think a week to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. For them to come and to, to be co cohesive, takes time. So I think uh, going forward, um, every coach, uh, you have to have plan B. If, if, if you know some systems won't work, some players are not available in time, maybe you have a pool of 40 players. And then uh, there's no wrong with with getting players even from from the continent. There's no rule that says all players must come from abroad. Yes, they have vast experience and everything, but uh, I think that is for me what I'd say. Africa needs to learn. You need to be attention to detail and also uh, don't give too much respect. Unfortunately, that's what Senegal did to England. Yeah. Yeah. And now <laughs> heading into the final, which is set for December 18th. In Qatar, generally, I am sure you've been impressed with the Excellent. whole organizational aspect mm. of the game and mm. how fans have turned up in mm. large mm. numbers to showcase the game and even the general coverage yes, yes. from the press teams yeah. in various countries, mm. despite the sad reports that, you know, one of the journalists died, uh, yes. covering the game from the U.S. Mm. was yeah, died, yes. found dead. Yeah. Yeah. And our uh, condolences to the family. May God give them strength to stand with the big loss. But generally, Ken, now that the heavyweights have been eliminated and uh, we're remaining with a few teams in the tournament, do we still have something to smile about regarding the remainder part of the championship? I think uh, there, there are a lot of things to smile about because uh, the, the, the first one, the most important one, I feel, for many football players or fans will be the possibility of a Messi-Ronaldo final, you know. That's still a, a huge possibility, especially if Portugal make it past the quarterfinal. And the second one, you so you, you'll just have to look at the advancement of Mbappe, because you know there's a lot of talk about him when the season was starting, whether he's going to Madrid and all. Will he still be the same player he was? And he's shutting everybody up in the World Cup. He just looks amazing against Poland. You know he was unplayable. Matikas yes. had a really really rough mm -hmm. rough night, and you know you have to feel sorry for him. But that's the level they're going against. And also, I'd say, you know, you, you have to be happy about Morocco, you know. For them, uh, they lost out the bid to lose to, to host it in 2026, yes. you know. But now they're showing people that they can actually, you know, really, really play this football, you know, show something great. So there's a lot of things to smile about. But for me, the biggest will be the possibility of Argentina and Portugal both making it to the final. But Argentina will have to be, you know, cautious about Croatia because if you go to penalties with them, you know, <laughs> They've shown it time and time again, you know, mm. they are not there to lose penalties and they are very, very great takers. So, Argentina have to be cautious. And also in terms of penalty talking, there has been mm. a lot of upsets, like goalkeeper for Argentina, Martinez, Martinez, who formerly played for Arsenal, currently is with Aston Villa. Yes. Mm. And uh, I saw him mocking Louis van Gaal that uh, he told his players that during penalty taking we shall clinch. Mm. But unfortunately, Martinez mm. was the main saviour of his team. And the same happened to Morocco against Spain in Pocho yeah. in penalty taking and yeah. the goalkeeper for Morocco did save mm. a lot of them. I think yeah. it's been a tournament of keepers as well. Uh, a lot of a lot of spotlight goes to on the pitch players, but keepers have also stood out. The Croatian keeper, the Moroccan keeper, the Argentinian keeper. They have stood out and uh, it's also a good platform for them to market themselves. So uh, don't be surprised to see that that player from, from Croatia getting a nice club. I think through our cup, yeah. we've managed to spot a lot of Kayla Navas, mm. Ochoa, mm -hmm. most of them getting noticed through such tournaments. Yes, yes. So it's a good platform for them and I'm happy that they gave their best in this tournament. Gentlemen, thank you for coming through. Barry, you, now that uh, Senegal and you said who Wales German got yeah. eliminated. I hope Argentina I'm sure you got some soft spot for the uh, no, I some hope, of the I, many I, teams. I want Argentina to win because you know I, I think 
the tournament has been won in Europe the past three World Cups yes. by World European teams. 2010 Spain, mm. 2014 Germany, yeah. oh, 2018 France. We need someone oh. else to win it. Yeah. From South America yeah. or probably from Africa. Africa yeah. Ken yourself? <laughs> uh, the, the dream is still alive. You know, Portugal can take it home. So yeah. we'll wait and see. You know, it's going to be a, a really nervous day because we've been watching the other games. So everyone is, is not sure whether it's a win. So it's going to be a win, but you know, full belief. And I think it will be great for Cristiano or Messi to mm. bow the fantastic last dance. Had, no. Yeah, with the World Cup. That's, you know, that's the ultimate thing. It solidifies them as the best player ever. Maybe I ask you before you finish, is, yes. is Morocco in Africa or in Europe? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get controversial. The dream is still alive for me as well. I'm rooting for England and they're playing Old as France tonight at 10 p.m. And I'm sure you can catch the action on KBC. Morocco against Portugal will be getting televised. And uh, let's continue talking. Hashtag touchline Y254 World Cup Eco KBC. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Always a pleasure doing this every Saturday from 1 to 3. Enjoy and keep safe.